I'm Barbara Chai with the Wall Street Journal, and we're joined today by Richard Ford, Pulitzer Prize winning author of The Sports Writer, Independence Day, The Lay of the Land, and his new book, Canada. Thanks for joining us, Great Mr. Pleasure, Ford. Great pleasure, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> so I know that um, Lay of the Land came out in 2006, and since then you've edited a couple of yeah. books, um, the new Granta Book of the American Short Story, Blue Collar, White Collar, No Collar. Right. But this is your first book in six years. Right. Yet I know the seed for this novel came much earlier. It did. Can you tell us about that? I started writing a, a story that I called Canada in the autumn of 1989 when I was sitting around in a little town called Dutton, Montana, waiting for some copy edited manuscript to come back for a little novel that I had written, a short novel called Wildlife. And I wrote 20 pages and then the pages came back from Knopf, as, who was publishing the book, and um, I just took a detour. Mm -hmm. And the detour lasted 20 years. I, I, I never have done that before. I've, I've always started a project and, and seen it to completion right, you know, in lockstep. This time I wrote three or four other books in the middle, and I can't say why. I, you, you could say, looking at it in retrospect, that maybe I wasn't, so to say, ready to write that book then, though yeah. I thought it was. Uh, but other things just came in the way. I mean, I wrote um, Independence Day, and I mm -hmm. wrote The Lay of the Land, and I wrote Women with Men, and I wrote a multitude of sins and so suddenly one day I just thought gee you know you've got all these notes for 20 years squirreled away so haul them out and see what they look like maybe there's a novel there and indeed I had squirreled away many 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 notes for that mm -hmm. period of time and there was a novel there I wouldn't want to do it that way again <laughs> and this novel um, the setting is very different from the Frank Bascom novels, which are set in New Jersey, of course. Here we're in Great Falls, Montana, yes. Saskatchewan. Um, did you want a completely fresh start, fresh setting? Well, I had the stuff. So I, it wasn't so much that I wanted a completely fresh setting. It was that I had the material. I definitely wanted to set a book in Canada. I wanted to set a book in Saskatchewan because the landscape up there had made such a huge impression on me, really, for a, a period of 25 years. It just, you know, when you get, when a novelist or po a poet or a writer of some kind, some kind gets this kind of unphrased sensation, a, a sensation for which there is no language except the conventional unsatisfactory language. What, what I want to do, and what I think a lot of writers want to do is, we want to take those sensations and put them in play. Mm -hmm. Figure out some way in which you can have characters <clears throat> articulate them, address them have dramas work around them. And so in, in the process of doing that, you give body to something that didn't have body, body before. So that was really more my purpose rather than deviating from some track that I was on that had Frank Bascom mm -hmm. in the middle of it. Well, one of the interesting themes in this novel is, so we have these twins, Dell and Berner Parsons, they're 15 years old, and yes. we're in 1956. Their parents rob a bank, yes. and so through actions that are totally out of their control, this sets in motion a series of events that changes the course of their lives. And I thought one of the interesting themes and questions out of this is the choices we make in our lives versus what's beyond our control. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. I think I was interested in what I, what I termed borders, mm -hmm. how we, go across sometimes knowingly, sometimes helplessly, sometimes by our own discretion. We go across a border, a psychic border, a, a, a national border, a moral border, and then we find once we're there we can look back across it and see where we were but we can't get there again. Mm -hmm. And I think that really what was what was interesting me. Sometimes, as you say, things happen beyond our control. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have control and we don't know it. Those kinds of moral choices, I think, are, are what fiction can be about and in so doing can lead us as readers to pay attention to our choices more. I mean, you know, what, what, what literature wants to do for readers is basically grab them by the lapels and say, hey, pay attention. Mm -hmm. You're doing things. This is your only life. Well, uh, that touches on my next question, which is, I'm going to read one line in the book. It seems to be the pivot um, on which the story turns. Do you, think that, do you think that novels have pivotal lines? <laughs> it's one of the pivotal lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the point where Dell is about to cross that border, and yes. his family friend Mildred says to him, really, there are two different kinds of people in the world. There are lots of kinds, but at least two are the people who understand you don't ever know, and then they're the ones who think you always do. Yes. So I was curious, on the journey of writing a huge book, a huge novel, are you the type of writer who thinks 
he knows where he's going or understands he never knows where he's going. I really wouldn't have the, the nerve to write a book if I didn't think I knew where it was going. To just plunge off into absolute abysmal darkness would be for me, well, I won't call it terrifying. It would just be forbidding for me. I mean, I'm interested in writing about things that I at first know something about and suspect there's more to find out about. So for me, I know a lot before I start. I spend a year before I start writing, preparing to write the book. But then I know that there are all kinds of ligatures between the things, narrative ligatures between the things that I know and what I will ultimately make the book be. So mm -hmm. I, I sort of know something, but I don't know a lot. But if I didn't know anything, I don't know how I'd start. I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are writers who do that. I think most writers who say that they do that are probably lying. <laughs> writers, of course, we all know. <laughs> Terrible liars. Terrible liars. I may be one or too. Excellent liars. <laughs> so you are a literary lion. You've been called the great American writer. I think it's kind of so ironic. So a lot of people though, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> well, your and your new book is called Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's about landscapes and exile, and these are obviously themes that interest you. I suppose mm -hmm. I suppose they do. And they're also this book is also about bank robberies and murders and abandonments and kidnappings and um, goose hunting and all kinds of things. But those things are all interesting to me too. All of those things, the, the, the things that you mentioned and the things that I, that I just mentioned, those are all the things that interest me. So the reason for, that you write a book is to put all these things in play. Mm -hmm. Make them be whole in some way that they wouldn't be whole just in lived life. So I wondered if we could ask you just to read the introduction of your book. I'll be glad to. <clears throat> this is word one, as they say. <clears throat> First, I'll tell about the robbery our parents committed, then about the murders, which happened later. The robbery is the most important part since it served to set my and my sister's lives on the courses they eventually followed. Nothing would make complete sense without that being told first. Our parents were the least likely two people in the world to rob a bank. They weren't strange people, not obviously criminals. No one would have thought they were destined to end up the way they did. They were just regular, although, of course, that kind of thinking became null and void the moment they did rob a bank. Thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you for joining us and speaking You're with welcome. us today. You're welcome. It's a great pleasure. We've been talking with Richard Ford. The new book is Canada Out Now. I'm Barbara Chai for The Wall Street Journal.